Всем... Either, I'll lose. So we've had a lot of people suggesting we find out what happens when you feed an engine with pure oxygen. And over there I've got a bottle containing some. So let's see what comes out of this, let's go. Check out what we've prepared. Obviously, here we have the car, some oxygen, some tubes, and a cutter. And here in the intake manifold we have made an orifice. That is for injecting oxygen straight into the intake manifold. We stuff the cutter into a tube, crack open the bottle, start the car. And we'd better kick this one off by finding out if the engine will even react to us adding oxygen into the mix. Right, then let's do some checks. Okay, looking good, the cutter is right on the manifold. We've sealed it with some sticky stuff. And let's see how the engine is going to react to us introducing oxygen. Starting the engine. And it is running. We've already warmed it up. And for starters, I'm just going to increase the rev count. You may slowly proceed. What the heck just happened? Now I'll just leave the gas pedal alone. Look at the revs going up. Oh, holy cow! Not everyone is going to believe it. We need to find a way to secure the pedal, so that my foot doesn't poke around down there. There we go, a bit over 2,000. Maybe around 2,500. Open it. Oh, there we go. Check that out, revs increase right after we start feeding the oxygen. Holy cow. Nice, give it some more. Needle is sitting, oh, not anymore. The rev count increases, which means the mixture is combusting better, with there being more oxygen, which makes for a cleaner burn. And that leads us to the thought that the power output might increase. But let's do some acceleration runs and see if that's actually the case or not, let's go. Okay, so first we need to do a baseline run. From 0 to 100 kilometers an hour with no supplementary oxygen. Let me rev it up a bit. And let's go. This is a naturally aspirated engine, so we shouldn't expect the results to be all that impressive. There we go. And so those are the results. But now let's crack this open and feed some oxygen into the engine. Saturate the air-fuel mixture with some additional oxygen. The setup is the same as during initial trials. We have that cutter connected to the intake manifold. Let me just shut the hood. And off we go. Okay, we are ready. Now why start the engine? Once again, I'll be doing a two-pedal launch. That's all good and well, but check this out. Right now, I've got the brake pedal pressed down. 
and the gas. And the revs won't go any higher than 2,500. But let's feed in some oxygen. And I expect the revs to increase. Yeah, there we go. We'll go. Come on, babe. Oh, I can even feel that it's gotten better. Holy cow. Isn't that something? Stop, 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 stop. The time has improved, but only slightly. The current time is 12.15. That's a half second right there. We'd better do another run, I reckon. Just to confirm that this actually works. Okay, we have a misfire. But when I add some oxygen into the mix, engine operation has stabilized, revs have increased, and here we go. Once the revs climb a bit higher, I'll add some more. That was a slow shift. The auto has gotten a bit warm. Come on. Oh man, the auto has gotten hot. That is very good. And we're looking at completely different results. Due to the auto box overheating, the shifts have become very lethargic. And we're looking at a time of 15.45. And I think we killed the engine, it's now misfiring. Yeah, it is misfiring. At first, the results improved. We cut the time by half a second. But after a few seconds were added to the time. That brings us to the conclusion that oxygen does indeed help out. Because before we saw the performance deteriorate, the thing was flying. It didn't last long, but it was awesome. It felt as if momentarily a couple of cylinders were added. Turning this into a six-cylinder engine as opposed to a four-cylinder. But that effect did not last long at all. Right, we've timed the acceleration, that's all good and well. But we also need to just drive around. The engine is starting to not feel too good. For whatever reason. But then, I mean, the reason is fairly obvious. After all, oxygen, as we all know, well, it's an oxidant. Like, metal is only going to rust when it's exposed to oxygen. Once it is, it turns into oxide. And when we add fuel, the mixture is going to be lean, fuel is lacking, but there's a lot of oxygen. Combustion is clean, but you're dealing with extremely high temperatures. Driving around on a lean mixture is very dangerous, because you can melt the pistons, scorch the valves. If your engine wasn't designed with such a mixture in mind, and in this case, I think we might be experiencing an issue. Let me add some oxygen. Oh, wow. Looks like it's gotten its legs back. Come on now. It is going nicely. Very nicely. But not all of the cylinders are firing. And because of that, it can't even get to redline. Even though I'm feeding it quite a bit of oxygen. Yes, yeah, so with a broken engine, this oxygen injection system doesn't seem to be doing much for us. Okay, so now the engine... Let's check the exhaust. What happened? We just did some highway driving. I suggest we stop at the bottom of the incline, because it's not pulling at all. Mm. 
It's even refusing to idle for some reason. On the verge of stalling. So here's what's interesting about all of this. I've driven about 40 kilometers, and the engine is barely running at this point. I do not know what's wrong with it. Even though here, I mean, I have dialed it back, since I'm no longer on a road where I can drive fast. But before it was at 10 to 12 liters or thereabouts, and the engine doesn't feel good at all. Enough? Nine. Okay, so we've done a compression test. And on average, the compression is at 9.5 kilos. 9.5, 9.5, 9 and 9. So it's pretty much within spec. But right here... We've got an endoscope, which I am using to look inside the cylinder. That's the piston which has got some soot on it, that's all good. And on the cylinder wall, we don't see anything horrible. No pitting or scratches. And the valves are looking okay. Nothing horrible to report. Looking at the spark plugs, they're fine. And looking inside the cylinders, they also seem to be in tip-top shape. So nothing obviously wrong with the engine, and after reassembling it, it works just fine. We have no idea what happened. My guess is that the ECU went haywire, because of all the oxygen. But now it's running with no adverse effects. Everything is good. Anyway, we were requested to try oxygen injection, which we did, but we do not recommend you try it. With oxygen being such a powerful oxidant, this isn't necessarily super safe. But you saw it all for yourselves. At one point, the car's performance improved significantly, but that didn't last long. And that's all I got for you. Watch us consider subbing, and catch you guys later.